Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to work on Dad's 720 this afternoon some. We've got some time here. And we sent the injector pumps and the two injectors, well, two pumps, two injectors. We sent these to Gary Power and had him reseal these. We figured it was a good time to do it while we had the 720 tore down to do the crankshaft. Um, this tractor has two Bendix pumps and two Bosch injectors, which is interesting that they're kind of mixed because these tractors were either Bosch pumps, Bosch injectors, or Bendix pumps and Bendix in injectors. So it's kind of interesting that it's got one of each in it, basically. Um, so according to Gary, if these tractors set for a long period of time, they could possibly get pitting in the pumps. And that would cause these tractors to get fuel in the engine oil and in the crankcase. Well, this tractor was getting fuel in the engine oil. Uh, if you left it, if you would leave it set for a really long time without shutting the fuel off, it would be way over full on engine oil. So a uh, good way to check this is to take you a blue towel, lay it out, and take oil from the dipstick and drip it on that towel and you'll actually see the fuel go a ways out from the drip. Uh, the drip will stay nice and black and then the towel will just kind of fade out and just you can see the fuel. So that's what we did on this tractor and that's how we determined that we had fuel in the oil. So uh, these are fully rebuilt. They are basically a stock rebuild. We didn't do anything uh, as far as higher horsepower or anything. So uh, Dad and I are going to go ahead and get these put back in, and uh, we'll show you how to get them put back in. Tell we're trying to video over here. Keep it down. All right, I'll call Zach and tell him we're trying to video and keep it down. Uh, Zach must be out beating his car up and down the road. Um, so we've got new gaskets. We've got new O-rings. There's that little tube that sticks up there. Oh, wait a minute here. You just got to kind of fish them back in. Because you do have the rod that sticks out. And you also got to get these on here where they actually push on the camshaft. Because these pumps are camshaft driven with a push rod. It's a lot of stuff to line up all at once. There a torque spec on these bolts? I didn't look. You better look. We got two bolts on each side to hold them in. Now I should have done a video taking these out, but I didn't. And also, we have this here that pushes on the end of the rack. It goes through this hole. Uh oh. I thought you said that would go through that hole. It doesn't have to go through the hole. Put it in on its inside. Oh, that's right. If I can get it in there. Give me. Yeah, maybe it, I thought it would go through that hole. I guess I was wrong. The spring will go through that hole. We took this out without taking that out first. You should probably pop this out first. Get it on there? Finger's not long enough. Oh. I often wondered how nice it would be to have longer fingers and possibly a tail that I could use. A tail? Yeah, like a monkey. Monkeys can grab things with their tails. Now, if you put a five-finger hand on the end of it, imagine what you could do. Something wrong with you. Nobody ever said there was anything right about me. Okay. You feel it Go going? On. Okay. Just thread that back in there. Well, there we go. All right, tighten that back up. There we go. Now the pumps are back in. And if we can fish the injector lines back in. Oh, we got kittens in the shop.
Okay, I get the nut worked back up. So here's the injector line that runs to the injectors in the head. There we go. Make sure that goes in there. Probably should wait to put the injectors in to tighten them. That way we have a little movement. Okay. So now we gotta get our injectors. These are the injector hold downs. These go in the front here, front of the head. Now I don't think we're gonna get it running in this video. We'll save that for another video because we got limited time today because we will be going to the uh, Kentucky Utility Expo, uh, the 26th and the 27th, which today is uh, Sunday. So we got limited time. I gotta get my injector. We're gonna be at the Utility Expo show. I should have should have finished that. Gonna be uh, gonna go and compete with mini excavators for the best operators challenge. So that's gonna be fun. Okay, so I decided while Dad's putting his injector in his side, I was going to go ahead and tighten these four hold-down bolts that hold the pumps in. Uh, the book says they want them to 35 foot-pounds. We're going to go ahead and snug them up here just with a ratchet socket. Then I've seen them using these old-style beam-style torque wrenches in the book. I had one, nice craftsman one here. So I thought I'm gonna try that. That'd be authentic. Instead of the click click type. Take it till it says 35 pounds. Which is right there. There we go. They are tight. 35 foot pounds. Well, I'm going to put my injector in now. I'm just going to put it in here. Got our copper washer on that seals them. These have to be torqued to 50 foot pounds to ensure that they seal. Slide in the head just like so. So here's the hold down. Now, they say in the book that if these aren't seated the way you want them to be, you grind a little off of here, and that'll draw them in deeper. But they didn't leak or anything the way they were, so we're going to put them back the way they came apart. There's no lock washer on that nut. I don't even think that's the original nut. It's what came off this tractor, but the other side nut's a lot bigger. So that tells me somebody's probably been in here before. Now the book says that it is all right if it has a Bendix pump and Bosch injectors or vice versa. They just don't want you to run a Bosch injector next to a Bendix injector. They want to see you put the same side to side, same as the pumps. They don't want you to mix match pumps. Now let me see if I can get my nut on here since we... There we go. 
There it goes. Tighten that line up. It says 50 foot pounds, no more, no less on that hold down. Both ends of our injector line are tight. Tighten this up some more because we're not to 50 foot pounds yet. That's snug. We also got to get our return line put back on which is down here, caught in the wrong spot. There we go, just gotta get it up. Now well, that's gonna be a, a booger. reshape it a little bit so this return fitting must have got a little banged up in in shipping and uh, we had to thread it out and clean the threads up and we need to turn it just a little bit to get it to line up properly with this line so that's no big deal okay I'm gonna torch my hold down nut on my side 50 foot pounds no more or no less It. That's all it takes. All right, those are back in. Got the returns back in. Uh, the only thing left to do is to put the cover back on here. We have the new uh, cork gasket for it. We just need to glue it to the cover because that makes it easier. And then set it back down here and put the bolts in. Now, when these were leaking, you could actually see in here, if you'd hold the light in here while the tractor was running, you would see little bitty beads of fuel bouncing around in there. So it's kind of interesting to watch it. It's not like it was a lot. It's just little bitty tiny. You could just see it on top of the engine oil. So, oh, we still got to get the flywheel and governor housing back on it yet. And the pony motor back on. So we got a little ways to go. I don't think we're going to, we're not going to get to all that in this video. Well, we got a new gasket for this cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that glued on so it can set and get tacky. I just use this high tack gasket sealer on it. Put a good amount on there. Just assures that that gasket stays in place while you're getting your bolts back in. Should be plenty. that get tacky and we can put that cover back on okay so unfortunately for today we are out of time but uh, i do want to get this cover set back on i'm not going to go ahead and bolt it but i am just going to set it down on here without dropping it and banging it 
That way it'll keep uh, any dust and debris out of it while we're gone. So there we go. The injectors are back in the tractor, covers back on, and uh, oh, we got the valve cover put back on. So we'll slap that back on real quick. But what I'm going to do is actually before we start this tractor, is I'm going to pop that cover back off and uh, I'm going to dribble some oil down on everything just to make sure everything's lubricated. What we'll do is we'll get the tractor back together and we'll get the uh, pony motor back on it. Uh, of course, it'll be back together, but we will keep the fuel shut off and we'll turn the engine over, the big diesel over with the pony motor for a little bit, build oil pressure before we actually give it fuel and start it. So that way it's primed and it's not gonna run fast right off the bat. Everything is white greased, um, but still it'd be nice to get a little oil pressure built back up before we actually let it start on its own. So anyways, thank you for watching, greatly appreciate it. We'll see you all in the next one.